sorry. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> you, you this this recording does come with the background. <laughs> Or, or we mean well, to, that could know, be a game changer. I'll have to uh, uh, double check with uh, our team. <laughs> you get the background. Uh, it's, yeah, if, if you get to work on the project, this is your background. So yeah. Um. Uh. Yes. Yeah, so. So so uh, the effort right now is to try and get ourselves shaped up to to put this overall proposal together. Uh, we were discussing where we put separate proposals into the DOE, uh, Oak Ridge National Labs, and the thermal area, this area, would be one separate um, uh, proposal going in. Uh, so, you know, it's building a, a test vehicle for, for this radical changing concept. Or we were saying if we could get one sort of system integration above a, a company involved that would be willing to sort of stitch things together, so to speak, we could then maybe have sections in the proposal of which one of them would be this thermal power and thermal management section. So um, because I've got a couple of system integrators, they're not classic system integrators. One's a brand new startup called Teresa. Um, they're trying to get funding themselves for, for, and they're more on the software stack. They're trying to make an open standard version of a DGX system with NVIDIA with all their software and they're, they're interested in leveraging the HPCM for that. And there's another company called Iabra that set up a, something called Abra Works, which I think is a partnership between Iabra and Leonardo, the big defense company in the US, in, in, in Italy, uh, that's the biggest one in Europe. Uh, and and they that they, they've been partnering on a on sort of an AI for um, for defense applications, and uh, they like the HPCM for they've got a different view, slightly different view in terms of training, etc. Uh, of the AI, so they like the HPCM format potentially for that. So they would like to put a, a, a specific machine together based on the HPCM technology. And so there are two potential system integrators that they can collaborate together to pull the pieces together. And so I'm I'm going to shape the document so that we have, and I and I need to, I'm going to try and get at least a rough straw man out by the end of this week um, uh, to to shape the document to really talk about the whole thing and the and the three different areas. So we've got the thermal work stream and a test vehicle there area, which is what we're focused on here. There will be a system management area, which where you're managing this very uh, heterogeneous configurable platform. Hey, uh, Roger, good to, good to, thanks for joining. You managed to come in early. I've been giving everyone a, a quick overview, Roger, so you haven't missed much. Um, Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right, me? cool. Yeah. So, so yeah. So there will be three, three, three subsections: uh, the thermal power, thermal piece, the the system management piece, uh, where that's both a, a new approach, a very open approach across the board, which Lattice are going to lead, and then there is um, an in interconnect uh, piece, uh, where um, uh, we're trying to make a universal um interconnect that covers all io all topology io for wiring these modules together from electrical to optical from like pci speeds to ethernet speeds or even to use the proprietary links as well like nv link or infinity fabric from amd exactly etc um so and on that side we've got sam tech have expressed uh interest in helping out there and also um, uh, Amphenol have, have been vocal there as well as a number of others um, in, and, and on the optical side I've got Abby Senna which we've got an LED optics and I've got um, Light Intelligence were on the call as well and they, they're they going to see if they can do the photo silicon photonics side of things as well so I'm trying to do all that so, that, so it looks like we've got the names in the frames and, and for the thermal uh, Chris uh, is uh, Boyd have been helping us out for a while. I, I I'm not sure if you've had a confirmation, Chris, where, one way or the other, whether you guys are are willing to 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 to, to drive this forward in in, in terms. Yeah, of I actually, different. yeah, I actually don't. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm on the call is to just get a scope. I haven't been on these for a while, but um, you know, it is very interesting. Um, I guess my first question, because you know, we're working RPE stuff. 
Um, in this proposal with this other uh, government uh, group, uh, what, the, the IP is is protected within that R RFP, right? Uh good question. Because um, because this being the OCP, I'm looking at what can we contribute. Um, whereas that in, in itself, there's usually some IP protection to all the players, which makes those funding you know worthwhile and it's different. Um, because at that. that that proposal is not part of OCP, correct? Yeah. So, the, no, the proposal is not part of OCP. Yeah. What we're trying to do, and, and the government, like, this is where we've got a tremendous opportunity, especially with a number of smaller players coming together to create an open standard, is is um, the government is it, it quite frankly is not happy about this round robin. It just goes between the big boys. And the reality is there are no big boys left. Cray and Silicon Graphics have disappeared. IBM has said no more. They make no money. Although it was a great machine, the Summit machine, and the customer loves it, uh, IBM made no money out of it. It was so specialized and nobody else bought it. I mean, it was so expensive and specialized. Um, and these machines are going that way, right? So, so IBM said there's no way, uh, and I'm trying to get them involved as well. Um, the jury's out on whether they, they they can help us out, but they they tend when things get more um, commoditized, so to speak. They IBM does push things; they're very good in the open ecosystem. So, if we can get their support, that'll be a bonus. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, so but, where, where I was going on the thermal architect is that. You know, I think it it really gets us more interested. Maybe if the narrative changes, and just based on you know the trending in the industry, right, with the liquid conversion that we're seeing, with data center energy being capped, right, it's not just a cost; it's just availability now. Maximize it so that you've got the hardware to maximize your software revenue. So the the reality is, I understand there's a lot of complexity there and changing that to make it really building block makes sense. But when we look at this architecture on the wall of compute and what was, what was interesting, because when you showed me the model at SC23, you're saying we're going to flood all those chips on the backside and it just didn't make sense. No, right. But, but where I'm going is, okay, in this realm, is it out of possibility that we double the capex because what we want to do is ideally we want to bring in a single phase coolant hitting the major asic and then the rest of the outer cavity we really want to just go with an immersion so we need a dielectric fluid an oil or something that's actually going to capture now wh whether or not we want to run memory or we want to run something else, or we want to run a second line of single phase coolant at a lower temperature. So now we're talking about energy consumption at a wall level, right? <laughs> at four, four sides of a wall, now you got a building. Now you know exactly based on that compute what's going out. And now you have the ability to run those walls in echo mode, uh, in, in, in econo mode, right? Or you can run it in turbo mode. So having that control right out of the gate says that what we'd be doing is, let's say, bringing a dielectric, because if we flood all of the power components, then it doesn't matter what the skyline is, we got it cooled. The real question is going to be the HBM around, and of course, a lot of that's vendor to vendor, even at an OEM module. But the key is, is that we could run it where there, you know, we, we have two coolant lines. So the, the whole key is, how do we build the architecture so that we're going to now double the, the the QDs in and out of the wall. That's really the big infrastructure change. And then we're going to have to make sure that everything else in the space claim around the physical connection is all prioritized around these two cooling loops. If we do that and the rest of the teams that's working with the rest of the uh, electronic ecosystem can support whatever they need, we really don't have a lot of impact because the dielectric should work with all the, their current electronics. Um, I've got to worry about making sure I've got enough 
coolant and pressure drop that's going to deal in a rack level, right? These are all parallel. And then the real question is, what sort of manifolding are we going to be looking at? How much space do we have coming into the wall? So I think all of those is a very ultra dense. And right. if you take that approach and say, this is the first single phase coolant with dielectric immersion hybrid to give you ultimate capability and ultimate economical and ESG gain, then everything that you said would be right after you say that. <laughs> and then th these are the teams we have. This is why we're doing it. So if anyone questions it, we've essentially said, we've got to make a much more complex infrastructure to make it simpler at the electronic interface, which is what you care about. But we we can't do that nickel and diming it. We we got to double it. We got to give it a count. Yeah, right. So, okay. So, a couple of aspects I want to address there. That sounds all that sounds fantastic, right? And and I think you're going in ex exactly the right direction. And uh, th some people have if 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 challenged me on this as well you know at the end of the day this is a doe funded supercomputer program right so you're the most fastest computer in the world um is what they're talking about this the idea is is this is a little r and d funding block you know one of probably more that will come down the road okay that will that will feed into a 5 to 10 years time the next exascale supercomputer um, if, you know, the idea is some of these are and the, the ideas will fly, some of them won't, and the, the government and the, the, the companies involved will pick and choose uh, what is successful that ends up in the end machine, right? Um, so I think, I think your focus, Chris, and obviously from our discussions, you know, you're talking about getting up to three and a half kilowatts on these things now as well, right? So, um, so I think you're on the button. In, in the in 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 the broader scheme of things um however uh we are right now you know at the end of the day if you look at the world of compute today everybody else uses the IBM PC still servers are still used no not everybody uses a DGX but AI is obviously coming at a rate of knots and people are saying the entire world of compute will be converted over to that in the next decade or less um so uh, so I've got two sort of things is we need an open standard that takes us beyond 1981 and brings us to where really NVIDIA has been at for the last five years or so or, or more. And, and, and then, but we also want to make sure that we have the ability to take that sort of standard architecture and extend it up into that high-end range so we, we we've got it there so because we're so small and we're so radical right now it's a, I, I i want this program this is a personal objective i want this program to be a successful poc of all of the bits um so that we can show that fundamentally this new brand new architectural approach does work and then the different pieces of um of 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 the of the electronics and thermal and man, mechanical etc and power have the ability to be evolved from where we start to the extremes. Uh, so I think what you were just talking there is like so. But the key thing I think that of this is in terms of IP specifically to your IP question is uh, I was involved when I first got involved with OCP with Molex. Their lawyers wouldn't let Molex go anywhere near one of these meetings. <laughs> and uh, I managed to persuade them through talking to OCP and Facebook and getting feedback back. It says, we don't want to steal your IP as a, you know, as a widget provider. Um, it's all about open at the architectural level so we can plug all the pieces together and people can innovate with their discipline in those pieces. So I guess... Chris, the fundamental thing we want to try and do here is, is actually make sure those building blocks are, 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 are the interfaces mechanically, electrically, coolant wise, you know, to your point, uh, um, uh, the, um, 
oil, I can't remember the proper name of it, or the water approaches. You know, we 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 can so, so we 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 have all of the fundamental hooks in place and the structures in place to the right mechanical sizes, so that the innovation of everything you were just describing can be done within that that envelope, so to speak, and um, and and have the interfaces, the quick disconnects, etc., um, basically fundamentally defined, so that we can we can support you know inside the widget we you can support the various innovations of the different of the different companies that want to participate um yeah, so so you know you you've 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 mentioned a lot here um i i think that you know it's all about participation if we're talking about standards you know and we're not going to drive this architecture because electrically there has to be a need right there has to be a solution um, all we can do is say this is possible. Um, but I think if we just... Well, if... hang on. I, I disagree. I, I think you can drive it. I, I think that's well, the problem with our industry is, is you've not been allowed to drive it. <laughs> well, you, this is you... where I'm saying is that we get to look at it that, that Alan, whether you know it or not, uh, based on my knowledge, this would be the first dielectric single phase hybrid system. And your packaging concept is what's driving the need. So I wouldn't arrive to this. Okay. So it's specifically around the architecture that you're driving with the power, flipping that up, and then having the need to get heat up and down. And then if you can allow for, for quick disconnects, that is an architecture that you're enabling with your electrical packaging that I'm not seeing anywhere else. Right, but I, I'm hopefully, well, the intent was hopefully to make it easier for the thermal. What, what I think I'm hearing you saying is that we're making it more difficult for the thermal. No, no, actually, it really comes down to if we can, you know, <clears throat> we can pretty much standardize and cool just about any chip. Are we going to be optimum? Are we going to be 92% of the way there just out of the gate with one or two or three part numbers? Likely. Right. Are we going to be 98% there? Who's going to care about it? Yeah. I'll tell you what, if you're paying $20,000 for that chip, you're going to damn well care about it. You're going to want 99 to 100%. So you're going to do your own thing anyway because you want to maximize that performance. Right. So, yes. Yes. You know, but, but can we get somebody just out of the box? You know, like you build a PC, now you're going to build an AI server. Yes, you can. Bang. Here you go. So, it's, it, you know, so, so, but the, the reason we can do that is with the dielectric flow, because we don't care about the other stuff. We just hone in on the 40 by 40 hotspot with, with meso now, so, so I was wondering on, on that front, whether, so, so you're, you're saying you've got this dual, this, this dielectric uh, driving the cooling of the big fat chip that may be free. No, 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 no. That would be single phase. A single phase. That would be your normal architecture. Okay. So just like you were doing, so that's like 70% heat capture of the module. Okay. And we're doing that with single phase current current capability. Yeah. What happens is when we've got a secondary loop and then combining oh, it. Oh, yeah, secondary loop. They're, they're both single phase, right? Is what and, I, I'm mismatching terms, so apologies. Yeah, everything's single phase. The other oh, good, is single good, good, phase good. immersion because we're going to just run an oil or a dielectric fluid. Because it's going to be lower heat flux. Yeah, so so, so so it's going to be fine. But now it's not going through a cold plate; it's going through a cavity that's part of the electronic assembly. Right, right. Picking up the heat, getting that out, and whether or not that becomes part of the HBM, you know, maybe we'd have two modules: one where HBM gets the higher flow, the other one gets the dielectric. But the reality is that's that's all we care about. And and if we standardize where that is with the re relation to the datum, and again we'd have to have the the, the blind mates or or the uh, QDs, you know th that's going to be the key. But you know where we typically take flow, split it out, then combine it. That takes area and pressure drop. In the in this case, we actually are just running it from one end to the other, and we just want to get in and out get the heat out. So it's pretty straightforward. And we just got to overcome the pressure drops of the QDs, but you know, everything's in parallel. I think it's doable. Um, and it's just an option that this is different than anything else. 
based on this standard architecture. And yeah. again, it just means that you're you're adding the plumbing. So if you're saying we got two plumbing lines, now you've got options. You want to run one, you know, run all your coolant one at one temperature versus the other. You know, now you can manage where the workflow is yeah. within the module. Oh. Or the other thing here is that, you know, we want to flood it, you know, with the, so, the so well, I, I guess just to step back then. So I, I want to I, I want to make sure. So you're, what you're describing is um, interesting, very innovative, and and you're the expert. So I, I guess if I'm hearing you right, that that yeah, okay, we've got two quick disconnects here. If we're going to put two separate loops in the open standard spec, then we would need four quick disconnects, and we just need to structure. So we need to tweak the design. Maybe make uh, to get the quick disconnects in. Maybe we need to make it slightly bigger on the on the on the thermal mechanical side to to, to accommodate the extra disconnects. Yeah. Um. And uh. But that's the open piece. Is is we we put the envelope. Is this is where the 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 the, the dual immersion and 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 direct uh chip water cooling the two loops are somehow designed in here and Boyd will have their own version and anyone else can design their own version and that's where the secret source comes in. Um, and uh, I'm assuming we still got the manifold on the back for the pluggable cooling of the uh, of the E3 drives. Um, you, you know, so, so it, and how do we attach that for, for like 40 watts worth of, of coolant there? So we, we can use heat pipe attachments on, onto the coal plate so we'd have to take a look at that that that's up at the top right those are the uh, let me, uh, actually let me just share my screen like you yeah yeah Let, let's walk through this please but but the key here is that we need dielectric when we're hitting the power components on the board so so here at the moment can you see this yes uh it, these are the quick disconnects so the, the the cold water comes in from this is the wall piece here so the water is coming down the wall and into the module the module's plugged in yeah um so it comes in to the manifold here and we had the water flowing down through the manifold and then back up through different fins and then actually it was it was passing through to the lid which was like you said immersion at the time was our idea and um uh, and then back through to the manifold. Sorry, it, it comes down here and then, sorry, then comes back through uh, the manifold and ejected out here is hot water. So so the water, so, and these are pluggable, right? So these are pluggable modules. So we needed a thermal interconnect uh, between these. Uh, yeah. There we go. Um, so, so you can see that I've modeled up a, Simple. Has anything metal been built yet? No. Okay. Yeah. So if I take that out. So so you, if I was to look at this, the the whole key is: can, can you open up where we have the immersion? Uh yeah yeah yeah. So uh, let me just hide this. That's really I think right now let, let's focus on that because that's the critical area. Because right now, as you have it designed, you're not going to cool the main chip. So that's the thermal issue with the design that you showed me the 3D printed. Right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. So let's just back up exactly. So the fact is that area that we're, let's say we're encapsulating that area, <clears throat> sealing it with gaskets so it becomes hermetic. And the plan is to put, you know, fluid in there for immersion. The issue is that we don't have enough cooling in that main diet. No, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you were saying about the pressure of, of, of so, it. So, so now well. what I'm saying is, okay, what we need to do is thicken that cavity up as much as we can. Because what we need to do is we need to somehow get a cold plate. We, we need to get a liquid run into that main corner, into that main section, likely with copper and out on the other side and right. or even on the same side it doesn't really matter 
that that's the premise then we cool that main area then what i'm saying is okay that's going to be you know single phase you know normal flow rates for what we're seeing in ai cooling then we look at the outer perimeter since we if we can fit that cold plate inside of this then external to that cold plate's your dielectric because then the dielectric cools everything else right right no no i got you so so and so... And, and, and hold on let me just finish that because then now you have that option is it better if you're just bringing that dielectric in and out to bring the dielectric up to the top surface because you may not want to bring the coolant that you're cooling the main die anywhere you want to bring that in and out of the module you don't want that to go up and cross talk with anything else right not going in and out you know and, and, and i and i think you if, if we put i mean we might need to make things bigger but if we had a couple of more quick disconnects um uh that maybe could come into that top manifold directly um you know obviously that yeah so so we we you would need to do a separate loop right to your point for the for the main chip cooling and it, it whereas the immersion dielectric let's say for the other components is also used to cool the pluggable modules up here right it would be easier because that would be something yeah because when, so so, when so you look yeah. at pressure drop because what you want to do is you know, at every module of a sorry to interrupt, uh, Alan. I'm just uh, no, no, no. Well, well, yeah, I, I guess no. I understand what you're saying. I, I, I like the idea. I, I guess just to maybe bring this back up to a little bit of a higher level. Um, I think what I mean, you're talking about what we, what you would do, or what the, the group would do in in the actual. If we can get funding, you, the, everything you've just talked about. Sounds brilliant, do. right? And um, maybe there's so so one of the things I was thinking is if you look at uh, like if we look at all the modules we're going to build today, I think every single one of them is going to be sub five hundred watts. Um, and um, you know even the H one hundred is only seven hundred. Now, obviously, all the all the silicon companies are going crazy and saying we want we we think we can get this up to three and a half kilowatts, um, you know, at the extreme. And obviously, supercomputing probably wants that as well, I would imagine. So everything you've just said is absolutely valid, and I'd love to have it supported in this uh, architectural design to see how there's a path to it. But so I think if we do get funding again, then then doing one other thing, Alan, to just to just to finish off. So just going back to you know where we're bringing that the dielectric up to the top, both of those loops really need to have the same pressure drop because we want to have the flow balanced. However, they're doing it right. So I think okay. that's one of the challenges. So if we get that, you know, meso channel core right over the main, uh, you know, uh, die. You know, we've got to balance that. So if we're just flooding this with immersion, right, we've got to actually constrict that flow so they're equal pressure drop. That way people can mix it however they want. They could run, you know, they, they have to run a dielectric inside. That's the point. Right. And so that's the key. Uh, whereas, you know, we're using, you know, industry ready, what we've been using for 20 years in HPC, which is copper liquid coal plates. Right. For the main die, the rest of it is is really immersion type right. play. So, you know, I think that the the newness of that type of architecture as it moves up to the system level is what differentiates this. And, and I think that's where you want to leverage getting interest. And I think it's a good story to tell well, if we tell it that way. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, I, I mean, if we can, so I, I, in the proposal, I think describing what you've just sort of said is is and 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 why you believe this is a you know an exciting uh, direction to go in versus you know the way just everything thermal map sort of living around existing uh, implementations uh, is is going to be great to specify. I think it's also going to be great. So so but. If we boil this down to you've what you've just said sounds brilliant, but if if basically we end up with 
how will these top and bottom pieces be made to accommodate what your you know what you what you you envision ultimately with a dual dual single phase implementation um but equally um it the the, the design we come up with which takes us to three and a half kilowatts let's say if you only want to burn 500 watts, then just the immersion could possibly work, or maybe it couldn't. I, I don't know. But 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 basically, you could say instead of having two dual loops, you just have the one loop with the immersion. If if your chip, your main chip, is sub 500 watts or something like that, um, uh, uh, you know. So 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 that but 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 the mechanical architectural infrastructure is such that it it, it caters for both. And maybe one, you know, maybe one has this this type of lid here that, that can cover uh, any device under 500 watts, whereas you have the more elaborate ones, the, the dual loop ones um, with custom lids for the, the given silicon uh, to cover the dual loop. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're I just looking at this design and it must have been a blind spot. Where are we getting the mounting pressure? To apply forty psi over this. Yeah, thing. well, that, that was your point. I think you were you told me in supercomputing that this. I think this I was gas... scared to go there again. Now I'm there again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you you said that that wouldn't work, and so this is where I was. I was thinking that we were entirely back to um, the, the the classic copper, you know, your, your normal approach, and we'd uh, just have gap pad between the. Uh, the uh the other the other the other hot components and the lid so we'd have a custom lid for every uh module was was where um i think we we ended up because of the because you said that the that the pressures would 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 blow this gasket off well what we have seen is essentially you know a small thin where that uh uh Aluminum plate is. I've seen. Uh, we've, we've actually done some thin, three millimeter thick uh, uh, copper coal plates that would have two ports that go up. So again, we're talking about four ports per coal plate, right? Um, but it's not flipped. It's the right side up, right. right? And so I think what we're seeing is, you know, it could be flipped, but the, the but the regular chips the other side. Right. So if you were to take the main section of that center chip and flip it on top side coming down with a meso channel coal plate and the back side, I'm using this with gap pads. So there's a coal plate there. So oh uh, yeah, the coal plate on both sides. Right, right. Yeah. So so that's where we could mix the flow. In that case, we don't we can use the same fluid. If yeah, we, that and so that I guess this I guess this is where we're trying to compromise with everybody, but this is where the, we've now the, you're the back side is the IO side, right? Oh, on on this architecture, that would be a major change. Well, you're a lot closer to what people are doing in this space, going more traditional. But like I said, I think you've got to flip the chip, so the electronics change a little bit. Well, the only thing is, is if with the way power is moving, the power coming from the top of the chip as well is another is another significant move that's happening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, so I think the key is is that we could be somewhat flexible. I think for an architecture like this, the real issue is that we're going to have to have mechanical attachment and compression in the right. center. Yes, that, that's tough to do that hermetically. And so I think it really comes down to potentially just going gap pad, but um, yeah, I mean, I I, I think that's really the option. Well, but, it'll, be it'll be thermal I think, grease, I guess, to the uh, to the chips. Is that right? Or yeah, uh, so, so I think what happens here is that we do have control of that 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 shell cover. So theoretically, because we have top-down surface onto the coal plate, there could be a spring member or something that we put there that gives us compression directly over the die, right. which actually would be quite nice. You know, everything we're off to the perimeter. So that might be an option. I can get the team looking at that. That would be an area um, 
of interest that we would be interested in um because that that's really going to make or break this design but again whatever we come down any blockage of the clip that becomes baffling for the dielectric to make sure we don't you know short circuit th that skyline because if you think right. about that right if you look at the left port i'm dielectric coming out of there going into this cavity hitting those skylines then where this you know frame is i got a big block there and now i'm going to likely be coupled to the cover and so it's just a matter of just you know then that's going to snake through and come out so i think it's you know I, I still think it's very viable um that cover can you show me the depth of that cover well so we're we're going to look here. down I'm just wondering how fixed this lid that here that? that yeah how much clearance because that's what I'm going to eat into. yeah no well we could expand this if you needed this to be thicker we can there's no reason we can't make this thicker to be honest with you but in the center if you look at the projection of the center you know chip onto the cover right yeah, yeah. You, that's for that's area that I that I can block all the way through right uh, oh, you, don't, oh. you don't need any of that area in the middle there. No, no. Well, if if this isn't an immersion chamber anymore, you can do what you like with this, right? To to come down onto the. The only thing is, is obviously we we need to be careful with clashing with uh, connectors on the back if we need additional screws in the middle. So um, that may may make the module expand slightly. Um, so is there any way to have a, a connector, a hole compression in the center line? If if you need a compression, we down, absolutely need it. We absolutely need it. So so you need several screws down the down the side of down the middle of the chip down here. Yeah, I do. Okay, so we, we we really need one in between each one of those those little ones. Oh, uh, and, here and here. Yeah, and the real question is if we can see. Here's the other thing we can do is we can put a spring-loaded, see, what I'm thinking is, is that th this is going to be more of a formed cavity or an assembly, because I think we're going to want to potentially use whatever height we have. You know, we can either have a spring compression that's circular, it's a round, you know, a wound spring on a screw, but I mm -hmm. don't know if it's going to give us the force on the, de on the deflection. Um, but that's the key is that whatever we come down. So now I'm thinking the cold plate could be sitting on that frame and that could actually be the cold plate that comes down onto the top. And then inside the cavity we make is where we flood the dielectric. Because, right. because the issue is that you don't have the mechanical mounting force. You got to give us 40 PSI. You give us 40 PSI, we can cool it. Right. And okay. so, you know, the fact is we can use a really stiff member here. And again, if it becomes part of the cold. Oh, plate, by the way, the 40 PSI, you're, you're talking about this three kilowatt level cooling, I guess, right? No, I'm just saying that that's definitely everything withstands it. That's where we want to be. If we fall short, we can we can make it work at 30 PSI. But we typically design for 40. Yeah, right. Because what's so, going to happen is, is that, you know, the last thing you want to worry about, there's other variables that affect him too. So if we can design that a higher pressure, 40 reduces the sensitivity of some of the other uh, variables. Right. So, so I, 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 you know, those, all of these aspects are fine. I think that's what we, that's what the exercise is, is about, can this be made and cover, cover the bases we've been discussing? And that will be the exercises of funding. Um, and obviously, the only bits that you really need to open up are the are how how all this mates together, both the compression screws, the the quick disconnects, so that another thermal company can say, well, we'll do our our thermal lid with our innovations inside it, and we'll fit into this OCP industry standard um, Lego block assembly process, right? So that that, that those are the pieces that you we we need to open with this. Is that is that you you comfortable with that level or not of openness?
Um, well, I think, you know, is this a proof of concept play where we want to come up with one design that, you know, it, well, it is a proof of concept play, yes. Yeah, and, and that's, this is where I'm a little bit scared. Okay, that, so, so a proof that, of concept that, here, you know, is great for that RFP, right? It kills two birds with one stone. Um, I think once you get interest, then the next step is a requirements document, right? That would be where anyone that's in these industries have something to go to as a starting point to support the standard right 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 right, right. And, um, and 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 even at that point the standard's not even adopted yet right so that's another standards committee yeah yeah so but we need to get it to a standard where the pieces you know are i mean basically the interface is the interface between all of the different pieces is where what we need to open up here um and uh uh that that that's that's going to be the critical piece of this um this approach if we're going to if we're going to create an open standard that uh a silicon company can come and play with their secret sauce and and, and become part of one of these machines uh uh the, all the different mechanical pieces people can come and play if they've got an optimization um etc is, is is the idea Um, but but yeah, but within inside each of the widgets is where the innovation in IP come in for differentiation between the different vendors. Yeah, so so I think for OCP, you know, I think Boyd can help contribute to kind of you know the feasibility and the reality, you know, based on you know is this possible? I think I've done that here. Um, so I think, you know, for your proof of concept, you know, there's, you know, we should be able who, you know, has ever done this CAD work, you know, I don't need to have an engineer do this CAD work, you know, so we've got enough here to at least, you know, so, so I guess from a resource standpoint, you know, I think, our, you know, looking at taking this and adding some mechanical attachment, could be a contributor if that becomes something that this proof of concept, you know, needs. Because again, yeah. this proof of concept is going to go in, in front of the peers, right? You know, wow, this is great, or this is lacking this, right? So I think those are the areas that, you know, as as you go down the path. I, 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 yeah, I mean, when I say, when we say proof of concept, you know, I, we want to ideally build this proof of concept and get it working. Um, and to a certain extent, I, 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 in terms of boiling the not boiling the ocean, in terms of being perfect, you know, um, in in every aspect, at the detriment of of getting a sort of a a working proof of concept that shows that this fundamentally can work to a certain level, and with other optimizations, it could be taken up to um, more of an extreme. Let's say, like like I like. I've I've been using the one kilowatt versus the three kilowatts, or you know, even the in my mind at the moment, the modules we're going to be building are probably every single chip we're going to put down in the in the in the first modules are going to be sub five hundred watts, probably more in the region of two hundred to four hundred watts, um, and and that will, you know, now now whether that like that will be acceptable in the proposal, so you know if we can. But if the POC says, well, okay, all we're going to do is we're, we're going to design something that has the potential to be innovated up to three kilowatts, but has something, a much more simple instantiation that it'll cool less than 500 watts, um, is, is you know, and, and we'll do the less than 500 watt one for the POC is probably where I'd like, like it to be. So it's a two-year program and we've got to put all this together. So if 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 we if we spend too much time making it making every every piece of this as optimal as possible we we won't end up with the poc completed in two years is my concern whereas if we're if we're quick and dirty about it and but we we we, we sort of say in the future we need to support these higher powers so therefore a fundamental design like this would would give us the legs, given more money, to take it to the higher levels, but we can do something fairly simple. Uh, that's sort of where I want to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we can easily 
you know, take a 3D print and, and quote machining that out, you know, of copper or whatever we need to do. We can have simple routing. We can do different things to get things done dirt down and dirty. Um, if we're talking electronics, you know, are not fixed, then obviously we can, you know, make some assumptions and, you know, make something. Yeah. Work. And, and if so, so if we could design, so, so if the effort could be there, but, but the, but in, but the investment also the, the extra effort says, Hey, we need these extra 40 PSI pressure points and mounting points. So let's put those in place now so that we, you know, we can, extend the designs from 500 watts to three kilowatts and we know we've got a men mentally we've got a path there but we don't need to do it for this poc we just need to do the 500 watt one first for example well we we need space claim we, you know without it you don't have a solution this way we, we go more traditional right 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 yeah yeah so, so so i mean i mean from that standpoint we can we can you know the emperor has no clothes right but uh i mean until we get called, we could run with it. I mean, it's it's one thing, but you know that's a flaw of this design. And if somebody asks us that, you know, oh, well, no, I'm saying we do we accommodate. If if you need more more holes in this board to 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 get to those pressures, we we try to accommodate the base design. We make the module slightly wider or whatever to get the extra screws in, uh, etc. Um, you know, if 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 that's you know if if that's one of the first moves we need to. We need to make we do that early on if assuming we win the award yeah yeah so so all of that is based on the rf rfp yes but with the ocp what is it that we're are you working a requirements document with this group i mean well no well so that's not really group? effectively uh, <clears throat> we're, we're, we're doing an rfp which is a very loose sort of um document of pulling this together that we have to pull these requirements and we end up with specifications. So that's that's part of it. We end up with OCP specifications, and we've actually built something to a POC level that gives the specifications meat, so to speak. You know, you know there, there's so, so is OCP, behind the specifications. But is OCP working with this with this uh, laboratory that's doing the RFP? No, no, no. We we as a group of companies. So this is where OCP OCP doesn't want to be involved in the uh in the money okay. path. So the money path will be with the group of companies. Um and the system integrator lead might might be the one. We'll put this proposal together. We'll have a funding section. So Boyd says it needs X number of dollars. Um uh the the power guys of the, the so Rogers uh, unfortunately Roger had to drop the drop there. But the other guys um, uh, have their the monies they require to do their piece of it, <clears throat> and um, um, and we 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 identify all of that for the interconnect, for the system management, for the integration, and we say rolled up. This is X million dollars, five million, ten million dollars, or whatever it is we think we need for the program, and um, uh, and we present that as one. Uh, as as one to the to to the to the government, they in terms of how they would fund that, then I would imagine that that basically, um, assuming they accept all of it, um, with the system integrator company that that maybe at the top would would get get the um, the fundamental funding and would be responsible for trickling it down to the uh, to the groups that are doing the various uh, specific aspects in the different areas. So, and then we all work together to generate all the specifications that are needed and to build the POC that that, that gives um, foundation to the specifications, so to speak. Gives a... So I guess my concern is, again, you know, I understand that. And when we follow the RFP with the government and that gets funded, right? There's IP protection and that whole ecosystem of teams working on that proposal works that through and again there's ip protection etc that statement of work is complete yeah i i, I believe there would be in that context uh because but, but, but the question is then we, we look at ocp is ocp expecting that work to be part of a con no no well those, uh, so, here? so the uh, i think the, the key so it's a good it's a good question chris um but i i think <clears throat> what we need to, like I say, we need to work together as a group to say we need to end up with an open standard 
where we're open at the interfaces and innovation within the so so you know innovation within this lid here um <clears throat> and and innovation within this manifold uh are uh, you know can be can be done by individual companies but these but interfaces like the quick disconnect the mechanical screws mating the pieces together would have to be in the open spec that goes into OCP. Um, so, so you know, of, otherwise we don't end up with an open standard. Does that make sense? Yeah, but the open standard is more on the ele the electrical side, right? No, it's everywhere. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's everywhere. So it's, it's a bit like a 19 inch rack. If you want to slide a box into a 19 inch rack, you need to follow the 19 inch rack rules, which everybody can do. Uh, if you want to use a PCIe card, then, you know, there's a mechanical mating of a PCIe card. Um, so that's uh, where, or, yeah. So that's where I think is, is the issue that if we're on an OCP call and we're talking about this as part of that RFP, I think they're separate unless there's a work stream here that is working the electrical standard and starts setting some of the space claim, right? Because that's going to be the key is, you know, you got to adhere to the standard so you can know it and it's, it works for you. Um, you know, the, the thermal is going to take a lot more than what you see here, but, you know, I think it's doable. So it just, right. comes to, you know, it, it comes down to, I think OCP is looking more at maybe not getting, you know, close up that cover. You know, if you close that cover up, that's OCP. They don't care about what's under, underneath it. They know it's an OEM module. What they care about is, you know, now a wall, right? You know, I think OCP starts looking at that wall is that's a major infrastructure change. Yeah, right? yeah. So I, I guess the way to look at this is this this entire unit is replacing an entire server. And if you look inside a server, there's lots of industry standard pieces to that server, right? And so <clears throat> that's what we're trying to do here is, so again, it's, it's really just the interfaces. So this top piece can mate to this bottom piece. Um, yeah, yeah the, you know, the, the screws that are in place that, that bolts everything together, they're all in the same place. They're specified as the same type of screws. You don't have to specify the torque or anything necessarily, but you know, obviously, with each custom design, there will be a a torque setting or something like that. Um, so what you would, so we'd have to select it, it, in the in the project. You'd have to selectively agree that these pieces have to be in the open space under under the OCP spec, whereas other pieces and 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 when you're on the program, it's assuming the government which I'm pretty sure it does, allows you to protect your IP, you can still work in the background in, in uh, any secret source going into this particular one that you want to keep secret source. Um, uh, you can, um, but, 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 but basically we've agreed in the specification the various mounting points of this being attached to everything. Um, is would, would would be the would be the point there so that so that everybody has uh so so that when it comes to the stuff on this side you know these these discs are all in this in in the same these ssds are all in the or memories are all in the same place uh across all the standards so that everything else can fit around it so that's that's the main that's the main point of the open piece really is that we don't it, we 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 don't we we provide facility for everything to be implemented, but the the secret design of this is is each company's as is the secret design of the chips or the power units. Uh, but see these power units, for instance, uh, that's that this footprint, this physical block size, and how it's sold to the board is an open standard. But there's 20 different power supply companies that make their own version of this that's more efficient or whatever, you know. They have their own claims as to why theirs is better. And and that's where they um, compete. So if you defined that uh, mounting surface that's around your green printed circuit board there and the mounting locations and the physical size and locations of the QDCs, 
the gray piece, the cooling piece on the bottom could either be an immersion cooled piece or a conduction cooled piece. It could be yeah, that can be any any design you want as long as the mounting hole as long as the right. <clears throat> and obviously here these these are the power pins. These are the forty eight volt power pins coming through. So you need to have the yep. holes for the forty eight volt power pins. You know uh, that yep. needs to be in uh, OCP iced, so to speak. So that would be up to the system integrator that's building this whole assembly to choose whether they uh, want to use a conduction cooled or a uh, immersion cooled. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, actually, in this project, the, the the system integrator could be saying these are the pieces that absolutely have to be opened up so that so that we can create the separate widgets. Um, but but yeah, when it comes to once the standard's been completed and everybody's using it then the system designer will be asked to say, hey, Boyd, uh, can you can you build me a special lid for this this special chip I've got I'm putting down on the board? Um, and I, we got a cool three kilowatts on this baby. Uh, and but but you've got to fit into this mechanical envelope. Right. Exactly. Yeah. At 500 watts, a conduction cooled would probably work just fine at three kilowatts. I don't know about that. You know, so that's where the the IP and the secret sauce Right, right. Gets involved in this, but uh, doesn't have to be revealed. Right. <clears throat> That's what we're trying to get to. I mean, so Chris, so I mean, that makes sense to you, or are you concerned that even those mountain screws are a critical IP as far as you're concerned? Is that the problem? Well, I mean, not necessarily that. The they have to be there to say this design is valid, right? Right. I think, I think one of the things that would be interesting is we, we you know, one contributor or contribution we can do is do a thermal characterization of this. Um, that would be a contribution to OCP we could do. And again, we're talking about overall temperatures and performance, right? Which, you know, says, you know, th this is valid based on this mechanical layout. You know, I could see that being a short term contribution that adds technical credibility once you know everything's considered but if you're not giving me anywhere to get 10 i mean right now i'm, I'm lucky to get 10 psi and so i'm right i'm killing my interface I, i've lost my i've lost the ability to cool that right way. right no well, well so your point is <clears throat> i mean your point is that, that, that this this design is fundamentally flawed at the moment uh <clears throat> yeah, if you well, look it at depends, any of it the depends other, on the coolant pressure. If, if you look at all the other OEM modules, there is you know lateral you know hardware with beefy springs and hardware that comes across. Some right. have a four, a four load bar. That's missing here. You know, there's a reason that's there. Um, so forty percent of the total thermal budgets across that Tim two add a thirty five psi lo you know loading. And as you go below 25 PSI, you start really getting failures because it's now affecting tenths of a degree on on, on the case temperature. So, you know, it's just, uh, you know, that's the area of concern. And the faster we can validate that, then we can look at this. But otherwise, we would have to be more traditional with gap pads. But again, even on this module, I don't see the attachment method, you know, to give right. give us the load. To give you the load, you need to get the... the yeah, so, so when you flip this over, when you flip this over from the other flat plate module, you know, we still had the mechanical attachment on that design. So somewhere we lost it when you flipped it over, and that, that's a critical, you know... That's yeah, well, you mean cool. these screws here don't come off? Yeah, they, these screws only screw into this frame. Uh, so, mm. think that whereas the, these obviously come all the way through. Yeah, because typically it's backside stiffener. So we're attaching, you know, the the opposing edge is ultimately, I believe, on the backside of the electronics. So it's more of a sandwich approach, but I may be wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. I... So that's what we would need here if we have that ability give us through holes on the board and we clamp down to the top side if that's copper we could put aluminum helicoils in we get all the strength we need now the question right. is you know right. would i want to leverage additional height on that top side and the bottom side 
you know, because I don't have a lot of deflection to deal with, right? So do I use wave springs? You know, I don't have a lot of lateral space outside of the cold plate there, you know, so it really comes down to, we got to look at a couple different things. And again, that's under the hood. Totally agree. Something we do at the RFP, something we wouldn't do here because we wouldn't need that to characterize the thermals. So, so I think thermal characterization, everything I'm seeing here would be something that I would, you know, recommend boy can contribute to this OCP track. I think there's just so many variables on any hardware right now that that's a different work stream with this, with this uh, uh, government RFP that if we win that, that work, that works done. It validates the stuff we've done here. I, does that make sense, Alan? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm entirely following you on the, So I think the RFP is separate on Boyd's side. You asked what where Boyd is. I think that's separate. And this, what we could do is do a thermal characterization based on what we're seeing here. So, so you could do a thermal ca characterization for the RFP or separate to the RFP? For this OCP track. And we would likely use it as part of the RFP too, right? But it's independent because... Again, if this is the framework that OCP is looking at standardizing, we've talked about a lot of details and assumptions. We can analytically make those assumptions and and you know show the performance of what we need. And I don't think you have that right now, do you? Right, no, no. Okay, so so that would be our focus. We would make assumptions on mounting force. We could even. Uh, We've done a FEA on mounting pressure analysis, so uh, we have a pretty good understanding. Are you saying as this design as it stands right now, or or? Yeah, yeah, as it is as a reference standard. So close everything up, right? So you you know, close everything up. Everything becomes a keep in, keep out area. We talk very generic in that space, and we can show you exactly what we did before on the plate, what we're going to see in terms of pressure drop, flow rates temperatures will will you know okay so 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 what we could do so this will could... likely create a flow network of at the module level because it's going again we might want to say here's one for you know two two fluids here's one for a single fluid um we'll just have to look at that but <clears throat> analytically we can create flow networks for both so in in that sense, then if we if we just... and then uh, sorry one last thing we could easily then take that flow network and make a wall and see what the sizing of the CDUs need to be to fuel it. <laughs> but I don't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, well, yeah. That, that there's that aspect as well, right? Yeah. So so actually, so I mean, so what you're saying is take this design. So we could do this for the POC as well. We could say you know the the part of this is we're making this as it is. Uh, we're turning it into a POC. We're going to learn from it, and so to your point, we we take if we took this design as is, you would say, well, you're only going to be able to stand PS ten psi or whatever. This is the flow rates. This is the thermal performance of this. You might be able to, or or based on our analysis, you'll be able to cool a five hundred watt chip, but you wouldn't be able to cool anything else or whatever it pops out at. Is that what you're saying? So we we could yeah yeah, but I want to clarify when I say thirty psi, I'm taught everything I'm, I've mentioned psi is mounting pressure on the loading of the chip, not anything to do with fluid flow rates and pressure drops, you uh, know, cool and pressure drops. Everything I said is mechanical force mounting pressure onto that white frame, right? Okay. Okay, so, so, so that's what I'm talking about. I need 40 PSI there. <clears throat> you need to give me that. And, and think about the force deflection I have. You can control that, right? So I need, you know, it's very expensive to have, you know, you can have aerospace wave springs that are, you know, molybdenum grade. The problem is, is whatever we have is going to be potentially in the dielectric flow stream. So we have to look at what the mechanical, you know, probably a stainless steel or something. It crushed. But it but if we put that in there, um 
again, we've got to have during this compression, there's going to be some residual force as well. So where are we going to preload it? Right. So when we look at the assembly, I think this is where we get that mechanical load. So how are we preloading that in that assembly? You know, so if we're talking 40 PSI, where's that preload in the submodule assembly coming from? Right. And that that really is the two pieces that's most critical because that's the most critical part of this assembly. Usually it's going to go right to test right after that because you're making really thermal and electrical contact at the same time, at least at a module level. Of course, when you plug this into the wall, you make ultimate power. Right. But, you know, and you make ultimate cooling, right, because you're going to the, the manifold. Right. But, but I think that's the key on the modules is, is showing how simple that is, yet it's so flexible. It's next generation because it brings in two coolant lines. Nothing else does that. Right. And then it just opens up. You got turbo mode. You got econo mode. You've got you got telco mode because we're running two refrigerants through there. Right. It's, it's two dielectrics. I mean, it's the best of both worlds. Right. They don't want any water. <laughs> so, you know. So when you look at open standard, now you've created an open standard architecture that anyone can run any fluids. We've got two separate lines. You know, we would just adopt some standards there. And so it's it's heavy CapEx, but again, that, that's the name of the game right now. Right. Now, is your POC well, going to be DOE funded? No, the idea here is that we, we yeah, the, so we didn't really get onto it, unfortunately, but um, the, the, the main idea here is that we, we, we put the proposal together, um, which will be um, sort of high level of, of and, and what Chris is describing here could go into that POC to say, you know, we will assess the current design and its um, its thermal capabilities uh, and its shortcomings, we will, you know, provide potentially some recommendations to improve that, or some uh, some major things to say that you know at, at a at a high level that we that you could change the design to so that we could support all the way up to the high levels, um, you know, and 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 so the idea is is that there would be we probably end up somewhere between what we've got right now and and a, 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 a pure perfection, so to speak, uh, of what we could ideally do at the, at the extreme levels. Um, but the POC would, would we'd actually build something somewhere in between the two that that that, uh, that covers that. And ideally, like funded by the DOE or funded. And all, by yeah, this would all be funded. So we would put the okay. we put the DOE proposal. We put the proposal together, and we say. For this piece we, of uh, for the thermal design piece of this, we need half a million, a million dollars, yep, or whatever yep. the number is, and and we will we will go through the assessment of the current design is probably good for five hundred watts, three hundred watts, whatever, and these are and these are the weaknesses in, um, and and that in that POC we say well we can upgrade all of these things. Uh, these are the recommendations that we would we would recommend to 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 get the yep. module. And this up. is the research, the amount of research uh, so that, that, yeah, that we so need to do so that. So you're being paid to 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 improve it. Yep. And again, in my mind, in terms of your IP, you're 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 being paid to improve it. But you can you can keep that IP. You don't have to release the IP that you that's funded from the government to everyone in OCP. Or the, the the main idea of this being an OCP project is that you you will you will agree to open up the interfaces so that so that the Lego block pieces of this can come together. Um, uh, you know, w w once it becomes a standard, otherwise it just becomes another Nvidia DGX box <laughs> that no one else can play with, right? Um, so. Yeah. Uh, well, so, there's, you know, so, so there's lots of development work for interface standards that still needs to be done that has absolutely nothing to do with the POC and the DOE. Uh, and, and, no, and no, the no. RFP. I think the interface, the whole idea is this: the, the the government would fund this because it will be an open standard of a DG Xbox or a Tesla Dojo or a or a Google TPU that everyone, a, a startup, can come 
from the thermal world, from the from the silicon chip world, from the power supply world, from the interconnect world, and they can uh, from the optical I/O world, and they can play with their innovation in this new open standard. So when does the standard get written then? Before well, that's, that's basically that's, that's basically part of this POC is 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 we are working together to say we've got experts from every discipline. And each expert is saying, well, I know, I know what I need to, to do my secret source. Uh, these, these open interfaces that we agree on, and we agree on during the POC that the, that needs to be, that screw needs to be there for everybody. Um, uh, and does it need to be a, a certain torque or whatever? Maybe, maybe not. So we decide what can go in the spec and what doesn't go in the spec. And people on both sides of the equation, you know, one, one company might say, well, we want to keep that as our own IP. Somebody on the other side of that that's using it might say, I need that information in the open for me to be able to do my bit on the other side, on the electronic side or the or the interconnect side or whatever, right? right. And so, so, you, so, your, so your progression is that you've got a, a proof of concept that you've already got here. You're going to get money from the DOE uh, to improve this, and then once you finalize this proof of concept design, uh, then you can write OCP standards right. for the interfaces that everybody can use. Yeah, I, I don't. I, not. I'd say it'd be part of the process, right? You'd be doing this on an iterative, saying, "Well, okay, these are the pieces we want to open up uh, for 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 an open standard," and um, and and but we but but it, this is purely a concept done by a system engineer, and me. With input yep. from people like Chris, etc., on all the different disciplines, but you yeah. don't need the OCP standards until after the. Oh no! Yeah, it won't. Right. It won't be contributed. It, the, the documents right. won't be complete and contributed until the end. But ideally, we'd right. have a nice set of documents that we could deliver to OCP. Of these are the these are the bit the pieces of this spec for people to innovate in between, um, and. So, uh, so I, I just want to add one thing. So looking at this module, right? So I'm looking at just a couple of different part numbers in orange and the one below it, right? I'd be supplying that. And so I'd have one for single phase, single phase, single phase immersion. Uh, I'd even actually have one for pump two phase in the main core with immersion on the other one. And so now all of a sudden, um, Alan, there's no reason why we couldn't bring pump two phase here and bring to pump two phase into the wall, which is going to be far more controllable with complex valve systems, which is where you want. You don't want a lot of distance. And the fact is that the whole wall configuration says pump two phase, this architecture gives you a direct advantage there. So that's where I'm interested as well. And again, I think adding the capability of pump two phase, both at a pure heat flux capability. So yeah, three, three kilowatts now, you know, we, do we have enough, you know, with these two lines, two separate lines, we can pump more with single phase to get the other stuff out. Right. So as that power increases, right. Even on the power, maybe this moves into proving out we've got the scalability both at the power, the interconnect, and maybe this moves into really what can we do in this platform from a capability standpoint, because then we can look at it from power and cooling more at a, at a bulk level, um, which is I'm sure there's as much concern on on power as there is cooling with you know right. architecture right. like this. Yeah, but yeah, then, yeah. I mean, getting through that. But if you add the pump two phase, we also have back end energy savings and. Yes. Again, if we're trying to get more people excited, I think you could easily say that this will support pump two phase. Well, so so again, if if we can define the simple interfaces, or not simple men necessarily, but if we can define uh, something that we're prepared to say makes this an open standard under OCP, but can have that innovation, uh, you know, like that you're discussing um built in by the, the expertise of different we want to give the expertise of the people in each of the disciplines we want to give them as much scope as possible i mean at the, at the moment if you look at immersion cooling companies 
they've got to build a swimming pool to dip dip servers in. I mean, that's their only solution because they assume that they can't change anything of the electronics world. Whereas what we're saying is we're trying to work together, the electronics world, the mechanical, the thermal, the power world. And we're trying to say, if so you say, I want to do this. And I say, well, if you do that, you screw me up on the electronic side. And so we, we, and, and so we need to find a balance or, or we might find areas where I'm more than happy for you to do that radical innovation. It doesn't affect me at all on the electronic side. So go out, eat, have your heart out, guys. And so that's, we, we, we just want to, make so the ideal thing is is that all the experts are in the same room from the dis different disciplines and they they can create that open envelope a screwdriver and a wrench yeah yeah they they, they create that o open envelope where they, you know, um, they can do the a lot box of in the garage yeah Sorry. i think I, I think the challenge here for our team uh honestly alan is just you know what other companies are interested in adopting this and you know for us i think we have a lot of great ideas and we could put a team together for it but you know you know and that's where this rfp is really the the game in town for us um but again you know doing thermal characterization as a c contribution to ocp that's why we're members of ocp um but i do think that you know we, we really want to just you know, understand that to go deeper, you know, we don't want to go deeper if there's not a, a greater mass, you know, of adoption. So that's why, you know, anything that we can do to really drum up the attention, you know, you get a couple main contributors of OCP interested in this. Uh, it expands it out. You know, now it's like, yes, here's your sample. Here's a design, right? So a lot of that stuff, you know, is, is what happens, especially in closed groups, um, you know, and, and that's why we're, you know, all we've got here is, you know, the ability to push, you know, valid architecture forward. Uh, the people in the closed groups, you know, get a bit three to six month head start, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot if they don't act on it. Right. <laughs> you know, it's business anyway, um, but it's, but it's like, you know, we, we're, we're contributing, it's going to be open. That's fine. But it, you know, we, you know, business is execution. OCP is really more of a, a, of a sharing of notes that, you know, is helpful to others. Right. You know, so, you know, the open standard, you know, people will, will utilize it wherever they can. And especially with liquid, we're seeing a lot of people adopt it. So I I think the play here is really say the sky's the limit for your new architecture. Um, from what I see, it can support all emerging cap capabilities, including pump two phase. You can, we could even do cryogenic cooling if we needed to. I think the material set we're talking about, you know, what what I like about it most, and we haven't talked about it, is the hard plumbing on the tubing. Because we're not spanning a very long distance. So right. now it becomes a very, very capable, controllable ability that is feeding into whatever the CDUs, whatever technology is there, you know. And so it really is a nice integration there. And that makes a lot of sense because then we've got a control board. So not only do you have your wall, the backside of your, of your wall is, is really yeah. your building management control system. That's where the IT you're going to have somebody with yeah, an exactly. interface. Exactly. You know, and I don't know if you visualize that out, but, you know, is there a way we can build the wall out in a slide that's actually got, you know, high-end electronics? And then we go on the backside and we see the power management, the rest of the data center. I think that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, well, I think well. the wall is, is is ideally that piece of it. There is that, con well, we, we've, there, we need some valve controls to, to each module because... If one module's burning 500 watts and no one's burning two kilowatts, um, you've got to change the flow rate through each module so that you have a consistent temperature at the back, right? Um, uh, so, so yeah, that but that needs to be done by the by the overall the wall management as opposed to uh, well, each individual module could actually control itself on its outlet. It monitors its outlet temperature and controls the the flow of the fluids. I guess, 
Um, well, well, one thing I'm thinking is if on the OCP side, if we contribute the um, thermal analysis, I'd also right. like to take a shot at getting one of our marketing ladies um, putting together you know, a wall compute exactly how we're seeing, how we can visualize what the end product would be. I don't know if you've got right. any pictures, but. Well, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, we do in terms of, um, I, I have some simple, very simple models, obviously. I'm looking at just like a 3D rendering, like you walk into the building, right? You know. Oh yeah, no, I do have that actually. I did it for, for I did it for, Let's see. Well, not not to the not to the rendering you're 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 talking about in terms. Yeah, so so like if you're walking into the room where it, where it resides, what? Yeah, would yeah. I, well, I I do have. Um, you can see my screen again, right? Yeah. Uh, let me just. Uh, hang on a minute. I'm sorry, I've taken over and hijacked your meeting. Sorry. No, no, no. This is uh, to to be honest, Chris. This is this is great, but I, we do need this level of detail, and. Um, uh, so so it's all it's all good discussion so i'm i'm more than more than happy about that <laughs> thank you um let me just quickly open up oh I don't know that is. yeah so so i'm just thinking that you know as you walk in you see the data room there, there, there you go this is a <laughs> This is what I did for Oak Ridge, but obviously you can't walk into this, but this is this is basically the frontier machine built out of HPCM modules. So you can see the wall there with modules built on both sides and all of, all of the individual aisles uh, between all the modules. So, but obviously you're talking a much more professional uh, walk-in type rendering. Well, and, and I have this one here, which is sort of a close-up <laughs> of an earlier version of the wall with one module plugged in. So the infrastructure, these are the power bricks in the walls that convert the facility power to 48 volts. Here's your, your, your facility power exchanger and your pump. Again, this is all cartoon. And then uh, in, in there as well, this zoomed in here, you've got the, this was, this was where I originally had the pump valve control of, of controlling the fluid going into these modules. Um, so so to a certain extent, we do have that, but um, uh, not not to the not to the professional level of a, an animation of a walking into a computer room. But well, can can you share those with me? And is that something I can use? Yeah, sure. Okay, because what I'm thinking is that I'll create some slides. The whole uh, 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 Paola in our marketing also does our videos. So if you go to our website, you see a lot of videos. Yes. Um, and YouTube. So she's, I haven't done one in liquid cooling for like a year and a half or two years, but this might be one where we want to look at it. Um, and if we take it from a module standpoint all the way out here, I think it makes sense. Um, but, you know, I'd want it to be where you get the mileage on promoting this architecture, because for us, there is no standard architecture if somebody doesn't adopt it. Right. So, so the question I have for you is, and I've asked every other question. Do you have any early adopters on this architecture? Well, the, the, the two system integrators that I mentioned, uh, so one is a brand new startup themselves is trying to make an open, they're, they're working on the software, the entire system architecture of, of a, an open standard DGX box sort of thing. So do everything that NVIDIA does, um, including the software stack. But they're they're a, they're a brand new startup trying to get funding themselves, and then on the other side we've got um, <clears throat> an AI company called Iabra, and the biggest defense company in Europe called Leonardo from Italy uh, are have created a Skunk Works um, called Abra Works, uh, and 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 they they want to build their own little mini data centers and also take it take the uh, the compute in the inference side to um serious drones um uh you know so they can so 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 they want to build their own mini supercomputer of maybe up to ten thousand nodes ten thousand of these modules um but probably oh. initially in a thousand modules but uh so but but that's but that that's that's the other one that now they're both they're both young they're not they're not your huge customers um, so I don't want to overstate the 
the opportunity size there. Um, they so, 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 so let's look at the second one there, Iabra. Uh, we do business with Leonardo. We have a, a very focused uh, um, A and D business with ITAR in the Northeast and with our Ashington facility in the UK. And right. that's where a lot of our aerospace is work is done with them, space stuff, um, satellite. So, um, I, you know, if you have a contact there at IABRA, I'd like to give that to our colleagues working Leonardo and just see what they can think about that and give us some feedback if, if you're okay with it. And yeah, no, no, uh, this... I, I'd be more than happy with that. I, I, so, so uh, it, yeah, no, that that's um yeah, because I'd reach out and say, listen, this this is who we're working with, you know, that there's interest in some uh, data center cooling, and we're working with OCP. Um, are they aware of OCP? Right, I have. Uh, right? Yeah. Well, obviously the I, I have guys. Are, I've been working with. Yeah, them. so so I'll just They've say we're working. Yeah. You know, so so here's a contact. Uh, are you aware of the, any of this? And I, I can get the feedback real quickly. And maybe yeah, that, yeah, no, I can definitely. Maybe do that's that. a linkage where, hey, we're doing X amount of dollars with them here for these other products. Yeah, this is easy. We want to we want to work this because they're interested, and it's 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 a different relationship reason. Okay, okay, all right. So cool. yeah, that that's why I asked. So you know, maybe there's linkage there. Um, yeah, I know Leonardo. We we actually I think do a lot of HMI like a military joysticks and that stuff that you touch your soldier would touch we have a lot of products that work there and so that's a big focus and like human and factors we, type we do a lot of stuff for them the human factors type products exactly is soldiers it's, it's your field work you know everything that you're going to carry oh, so it's not that's not thermal related at all then i guess <laughs> Well, you know, no, it isn't. It, it really isn't today. But think about where liquid cooling goes, because most right, of that's right, right, there, right. right? You know, you know, you you actually okay. What's in that joystick? Plastic. Well, could there be a transceiver there? Could there be a liquid cooling loop? Yeah. Is there space there that higher power stuff? I mean, could 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 you have a tra RF transmitter right there? You know, should you? Right. 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 <laughs> right. 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 So, okay. It, All right. Well, that's good. I I can certainly do that. Um. All right, so uh, we, we've we've run over. So thank you both for all your time. But uh, so, in terms, of, I, I guess in terms of going forward, in in terms of us pulling together a, a proposal. I mean, Chris, I guess you still need to agree internally. But based on what you've heard today from personally, look, the scope of it, and and you keeping IP certain IP. I'm uh, I, I think that's that's more than possible under this because uh, this is something that the government does do when it funds people you keep your IP right and I don't think you necessarily you know if you get funded if you say well we want x a hundred thousand million dollars whatever it is you you need for your contribution of this program um uh you that 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 you said well we're going to do a certain amount of work that we want to keep as IP ourselves, but obviously we want to end up with this open module standard. So we're, we're, we're obviously prepared to some of the ideas we, we come that we need to interface with others. You know, we, we, we will open that up into an OCP open standard spec. As long as you've got that sort of mentality going into the POC, um, uh, going into the, the RFP, the, the response that we put in, um, and and I believe I, I like your idea of saying, look, you've designed what you, the concept is the concept right now. We'll start by simulating that concept and saying, hey, guys, you can only cool 100 watts with this approach <laughs> or or whatever or, or whatever it is. Um, and so um, we got to make some fundamental changes. We quickly get to that. And then the program you know, you've budgeted to make some changes to get it up to a, a a decent level. And maybe we've got some hooks in place so that we don't take it to the extreme level, but we know we could take it to the extreme level with these open spec um, uh, uh, pieces in place in the future. And and so that would be the sort of scope that I would see. And the other, the other piece of this working little proposal is Roger Beeston was on the call. We he didn't get a chance to really talk, obviously, but but Ro Roger would be designing the power load modules, uh, where he'd put the power supplies down and 
simulations of the chip you, you make an adapter and it is exactly the same footprint as one of the chips that would go down and it would be able to slam a thousand watts um consistently uh, so that we could test out the thermal uh, performance for real and then it lines up with the simulations um so you know that would be the sort of entire scope of the project um uh so and again you know how much we actually get done is is I'd like to get to a working POC. So if in that early stages, it's a two year program. So if in the early stages we say, well, look, uh, the design as it is without changing it too drastically, or we can make some changes, but we don't go into the design of, of, of a, a, a fairly simplistic design, we can do 500 watts. I'm more than happy that the POC does 500 watts, but it says the fundamental open design of this, the the, uh, the OCP spec pieces, the open interfaces, could allow further innovation to easily get that back up to the three kilowatts or whatever. Um, that's the sort of thing that, I, and, and we need we need to shape those words in the RFP response. So we, this is what we need to do in the next few weeks, which is where that contribution would come from if, if Boyd are prepared to and others are prepared to, to to partake in this. Yeah, so that's exactly why I said that, you know, when I look at what we can do now is we can start looking at getting a flow network at a module level. Then it's, you know, if we fast forward and say we win this RFP and we get the, we get the grant and the teams that were working, well, we would take that flow network and optimize, right? That's everything we talked about. That's the the, the truth. Okay, so 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 that would be and the that would be the we, words you put in the RFP then. Yeah, and and so the thing is, is that if we don't get it, we still have the initial, you know, analysis. So, you know. Well, yeah. So I I guess what I'm saying is what the RFP is a window that's coming, right? They're going to drop the the um final RFP any day, and then we've got four to six weeks to respond. And I'm not sure when they'll eventually give us funding if we win. Um, but but so I'm I'm suggesting you don't have to do anything. You know, we'd just put in the in the proposal, you'd say exactly that. We will start um if we funded, we would start by doing the simulation analysis of, of the current design, and we'd find the flaws, uh, you know, including the wall, obviously, like you said, uh, in the in the heat exchange to the facility. We we'd model the whole lot. We'd, we'd see what the shortfalls were. Uh, we would then proceed to recommend changes that would need to be done to to take it up to a some 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 usable level. At, you know, at the at the coarse grain uh, to the maybe to to the highest performance level, and then we'll continue physically implementing a, a simpler version that just gets us to five hundred watts or whatever. Um, uh, something along those lines you know so but obviously it's an open-ended project but you describe the process that you would go through uh if you got the funding yeah i think that's doable i could probably help out there so you know I, I'm, I'm along the same lines here because what you need isn't you know i, I gotta take people off projects right so um but yeah very good i gotta run i, I gotta prepare for another meeting but thank you so much and uh nice meeting you michael yeah, thank you very much for your time, Chris and Michael. Nice to meet you. And uh, um, uh, in terms of yourself, sorry, uh, if, if Envent are certainly interested in collaborating on this, like Chris said, it, 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 they don't have all the resources either. So, uh, I mean, it, this is this the more we make this a community effort, the better it's going to be and the more likely we're going to get funded, I think. So, yep. you know, where, where, where maybe Chris can put stuff together if Boyd are prepared. To, I think if we can get Boyd behind this, it gives us great credibility. And um, in Chris, if if there's areas where you can, you know, other you don't have the resources, but others like Envent can help, and they get a bit of the funding, um, then then that's that's the way I'd like it to work. Obviously, um, and 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 obviously that doesn't make sense for some of the IP pieces that you want to keep, but maybe some of the more of the open pieces you you're working together. To, to these, you know, to the, honestly, the from my standpoint, getting any mechanical engineer, any contributors that are mechanical engineers that are willing to go in, take your CAD model, make the changes that we're seeing at a high level, you can further the design really quickly. Um, yeah. 
I think that's the biggest thing. So and, and, anyone... and so great. Well, that's great, Chris. So I, I think if you can if you can get support and you can contribute to the main proposal quickly um, in, in this high level outline, so the government sees what we're going to do with the X number of dollars we ask for. And you sort of think, well, if I had the resources, I'd need a mechanical guy for X X hundred hours or whatever. And so you you sort of you you outline it in there that we need this much money, and then people like Michael were there that, and other companies that say, yeah, we, 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 I can get a resource that'll do the mechanical. Then you obviously seed that 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 funding piece that you allocated to to them, so they get paid for doing that contribution under the under the project, so to speak. Sounds good. All right. All right, guys. Well, actually, that was a great meeting. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and I did, don't don't apologize for taking up the time. Everything you say is, is always great to chat with you. Um, uh, and uh, uh, tr truly appreciate the contribution you've helped dramatically over the over the years. In fact, so I truly appreciate it. And uh, and 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 uh, uh, let me know as soon as possible if you know at your end. You know, well, you want to keep to reaching out to Sig Vendor. It's going to be his call. And now I've yeah. got a little more context here. Like I said, I think that, you know, there's opportunity. What I like is disruptive technology. Um, but again, it's more of a challenge that we haven't done this before. It's not like it, it can't be done. We haven't done it before. Right. From that, I think it really, you know, opens up standards, breaks down barriers barriers everything you're looking for is just that we got to find uh, an adopter and the faster we find an adopter the more resources we'll put into it that's the bottom line right right yeah and that's why i think we need we can get people to do it on their own dime like other ocp projects that i'm sure you work on we need that's where we do need this government assistance to at least make it a little bit easier for people to engage and so so yeah so i mean if you can take the action to quickly speak to your team and and uh, now you've got more contacts and <clears throat> just say, hey, look, we're, we're prepared to help to put uh, put this this piece of the proposal together. Um, you know, it's, it's, that, that's, that's a, a, a relatively small amount of work to get the proposal in, in place and to put some numbers behind it. That would be a great start. <clears throat> and then we can, you know, as we progress, we can sort of invite others like Michael, et cetera, from uh with other yep. skill sets to help out um if we actually win it so that you're not burdened with finding 10 or 20 people chris <laughs> when is this leave fewer of your people on projects so 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 we haven't received the rfp correct uh not the final one you you've you've already got the draft one right which okay so so when will we receive the final one I, I asked them, I sent them an email and asked them that. Uh, I didn't and, get a response yesterday. And when is it due? It, they they told me um, it would be early in 2024, the, the final RFP would drop. And when the final RFP drops, we would have four to six weeks to respond. And um, the expected program duration, project duration is two years. So you've got to get whatever you propose done and dusted in two years. All right. So I think the thing is, is that um, I'll I'll touch base with Zig Vendor the next time I I I, I see him. Um, hopefully tomorrow. And uh, but yeah, until you get something from him, you don't have a a, a green light from Boyd yet. Just just FYI. I no, nobody's get you. You're my main, you and Philip are my main in. Uh, yeah. So in terms of OCP in this track. If we need to do a, an initial analysis, thermal analysis, if that helps the power teams out, whatever uh, we can do there, um, like I said, that's something I think we could start looking at and building. And then, you know, whether this, you know, uh, Northern Lights thing works or not uh, is, is, is TBD, you know. And yeah. if it does, then, you know, we're using those tools that we did here. Um, so again, if you want this to move in a different track, um, you know, we can support that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I guess just uh, in terms of any, I mean, if you can do progress outside the scope of the RFP, then fantastic. <laughs> and, and, and any and ongoing contribution will be great as we make progress. But uh, 
um the the rfp is sort of my 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 core focus right now in terms of trying to pull that together and in all honesty to be honest with you chris i i think if we can't if we can't really get the attention of the government to for on this funding uh then you know i i, I i'm going to run out of momentum myself in terms of being able to make this real <laughs> so i've got one or two more avenues so to 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 explore before i throw in the towel but well uh, if, if that's the case uh, alan that's what i said before promote this as the very first hybrid you know dual loop for a total energy availability and that this is the maximum capability and it can support pump two phase i think i think those are the buzzwords you want to wrap this around at the very front at the very beginning that's a differentiate it supports all modes of next generation liquid cooling well uh, so if you can capture those words and that could be your in assuming you you're you're happy to participate in the rfp if you can put that in that's in in the thermal power thermal section is the introductory paragraph because <laughs> obviously that's one piece of this entire pie i'm talking about other areas on the electronics side right yeah, uh, but that's a buzzword. That's what's yeah, no, no, that, that sounds perfect. And that it, you know, and, and by the way, if we're gonna separate out this RFP response with with um a sort of a top level system or integration discussion of the pieces that we're gonna pull together, and then we're gonna have sections, like I said earlier, with your section, the thermal and power section, and we're gonna itemize in terms of the costs we we want a total of five ten million dollars whatever the number is we want um and it's split up with these this much money going to these separate sections and if the government says well um we're not we're not prepared to fund the whole project but there are pieces of the project that we think we would like to fund they could say we'll fund the just the thermal piece because we like the buzzwords going on there and uh, and we want to do that, but we won't fund anything else, and that'll be fine as well, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so 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 yeah, so it's a uh, um, and there's a sexy bit on the optical side that there's a, a Avicenna that are uh, that are exciting me on what they can do. So I think we've got a couple of opportunities there where we can excite the government with some radical change, and it will come from the experts in each of the disciplines. <laughs> Um, yeah. so, so I, yeah. got, I got to run. Sorry, guys. All right. Yeah. No, thanks, Michael. Okay. Anyway, anyway, yeah. you. All right. Thanks. Yeah, so, so Chris, that, that, yeah. So, so yeah, let, let's, so, so basically I guess the action is, uh, you know, can you guys, uh, contribute to the RFP and, uh, if, if you can get those approvals then, then, uh, and let me know one way or the other quite quickly, that'd be great. Yeah. This was helpful. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Chris. Much appreciate Take care.